Hey, good morning. I'm here to do a quick recap of the build that I did uh, for my 1957 field and stream canned ham. Uh, when I bought it, uh, I didn't realize, it's actually, I didn't realize what I didn't know until I took uh, Larry Walsh's class, cannedhamtrailers.com. And, you know, I'll just start off by saying if I didn't find that guy in his Patreon page, <laughs> I, like many, likely would have done irreparable damage to this trailer um, just because nobody knows how they were designed and built, and uh, thank God for Larry being there. Anyway, when I, when I got this, I purchased it from a buddy of mine. I didn't know what I didn't know then about chassis boards and checking for wood rot, but yeah, it was a total re rebuild. Um, a tree had fallen on it. Um, it actually had a crack, a crush from here all the way down uh, there. It also had uh, right here, it was a giant Y. It was like where a tree had punched through here all the way into the cabin. And of course, when it's crushed across the entire uh, length of the trailer side to side, um, it crushed the roof broke the closet on and on and on so uh, I did not I will just begin by saying that this trailer is for me uh, I did the best I could and it's not perfect but it's good enough uh, it's roadworthy it's watertight uh, it may not be the prettiest but it's mine and uh, um, I will say that I did not spend thousands and thousands on replacing metal. Um, I worked at a body shop and with the help of a friend, Eddie Strack, who does body work, he and I were able to straighten this metal along with the, uh, um, the J-rail and the C-channel and all that stuff up there. Believe it or not, I was able to straighten it. It's aluminum, pretty soft metal. Got by. Um, with the roof, I did replace the metal on the roof um, it was pretty bad but instead of buying matching you know creased metal nah I just put some uh, thinnest metal I could find and did the whole roof in sections and we'll get to that but anyway um, it took me a year to do this project and it wasn't a year of tinkering it was a year of constant hard work we're talking 30 to 60 hours a week kind of a thing on certain weeks. Um, it was rarely would I take a week off, but I did it in almost a year. I had a deadline. I know you say don't do put deadlines, but I had a deadline because I wanted to take it camping this summer and I made it. So. But anyway, uh, let's do a little walk around. This right here used to be on the back of the trailer. I moved it up front. Naturally, that's where it goes. Um, I ended up putting up two propane tanks in this up here. I don't know if you can see that. That is a diesel fuel that is for my heater. So I put a heater in, I put an air conditioning in. So let's just start with that. Um, this right here. Uh, that is a contraption that I built. And I'm going to hit pause so I can open it up. So, when I want to use the air conditioner, this can is up. Okay. So, this was my solution. Most of this was crushed metal. Cut it out, put an air conditioning unit in. And I built this myself. This is just a flimsy piece of wood that folds up nicely, sets back in, but instead of having this whole thing articulate out, it blows the heat this way, sucks the cool air in this way. I made this um, with some sheet metal wrapped with some of the aluminum that matches the brakes and it locks up super tight. So, 
there's that going around here where I had a crush in here I ended up taking the quarter panel off and what I ended up doing was cutting a square you can probably see some of the rivets here I cut a square out I took the backsplash which I no longer I'm going to use and it happened to be the same metal so I riveted it and I did use some sealer in there in the rivets and then once it was riveted I did lots of all metal it's equivalent of bondo but it's all metal now I didn't do perfect I was you know, like I said you know doing this for almost a year and it gets to the point where you're like okay I can live with that I don't care I want to go camping so but it fixed it and I didn't have to pay thousands of dollars for new metal. So another thing, the windows. Um, yeah, everything got pulled out. There's five different gaskets. In these particular windows, I, I replaced everything. If it had a gasket or a, one of those little fibery velvet sorts of uh, window grommet doohickeys, it got replaced. I even went as far as, I don't know if you can see these, but these are the ones that go in between the slats. That was pretty cool. This didn't have it, um, but it certainly seals things up real well, keeps the rain out, so I highly recommend it if uh, you have the option. Let's talk about the paint job. So, with regards to the paint job, I gotta tell you, uh, it's, that's the final touch of everything. So, yeah, I have a lab. And he jumps up here and says, hey, let me in. So there's scratches and whatnot, and it's been used. I don't care. But I did a big test. I tested with paints and different orders, and the way I did this paint job was with um, vinyl stencils that I made with a Cricut printer. And I took photographs of Camelback Mountain and Sedona and, you know, the Superstitions, Four Peaks, Weaver's Needle. Put some cowboys in there and some more of the finer details. So it's exact duplicate on the other side. But I just figured if you're going to do something, might as well make it cool. And so it just wraps all the way around. I matched the... Uh, the white paint to my truck. I have a, just a Dodge pickup truck that I tow it with. But when I redid this trailer, I redid everything. I even cut the wheel wells out, made them larger, put these fenders on. Uh, actually put in some electric. It never had that. I kept this mirrored glass. Interesting thing. This came with the trailer. I left it, I could have replaced it, but why? You know, it's reflective. During the daytime, you have to get right up in there to see in. And, and at the nighttime, I'll show you the inside what solution I came up with to pull down and cover from the inside. So it's a, a great combination. Uh, if you guys are building one, you have one like this, I'll show you what I did. Maybe it'll be a good fit for you. With regards to the Field and Stream logo, I know that people have them, you can buy them, but they're not the same. <clears throat> they don't have this. They don't have the, the same font, they don't have the original and, and so on and so forth. So what I did <clears throat> is I took a photograph using my camera and I just made a stencil. Okay, I cut it up on prick, uh, Cricut. Again, it's a vinyl cutter and that's what I did. I just made a photocopy of it and printed it up and when you're doing 50 miles an hour down the freeway, nobody can tell. I rewired the entire trailer for a, a seven pin connector and I put uh, all new LED lights because, you know, I don't know, I just, they're brighter, they last longer, they don't burn out as often and I was able to hook up reverse lights with it and I thought that was a good thing. As well, I have a backup wireless camera, which is pretty deluxe. It'll reach probably 30 or 40 feet because I've actually had it on in my truck out in the front yard and it'll pick it up. So that was a good feature. So one of the things that I did was I 
got these moon landers. I call them moon landers. They're not. They're uh, stabilizer bars. And they made a significant difference. I got them on e-trailer. Um, I highly recommend that. Under here, I put mud flaps to kind of keep the debris from getting up onto the uh, the skirt boards and things like that. So there you go. That, let's go take a look at the inside. In here, I have the original door. Can't open the door the whole way um, while that air conditioning is open. But, you know, I did the best I could. I use magnets, magnets that hold the door here. And I just embed them into there. I made my own little handles. But yeah, so let's take a peek. By the way, my floor, this is just vinyl. It's meant to look that way. I wanted it to look a little vintage, a little rustic. I did not want to go for some mid-century modern crud. That's not for a camper. Many of you may have seen this. I made one for Larry. Um, this is the Coleman stove kind of propane light that used to be right here. I just happened to make my own platform, made an on-off light, and again, I used this Cricut printer to highlight and sandblast, and, you know, things, but whatever. Enough of that. Another thing I did, key fob. I love this. There's four of them. You just, it's for 12 volts, so you just wire it in, boom. I made these 12 volt. I bought the 12 volt bulbs and I have another button here. It lights up underneath the bed, under the cargo area. We'll get to that. So uh, originally, all of these doors that are painted white, okay? They all were painted yellow. Like somebody got out yellow paint and just caked it on and it was awful and this was yellow too the refrigerator the princess oven it was all yellow and i'll tell you what that was a bear scrubbing that thing to get it to etch so that i could paint it again but i do like how it came out so yeah um i did some upgrades here i got an ice maker i got a coffee pot it slides out Blah, blah, blah. There you go. Storage. Um, okay. So underneath my bed, I cut a larger hole. And yeah, everybody's got to have one of these. So not to get too gross, but there you go. Comforts of home. And incidentally, this is a sealed compartment for what it's worth. I just turned that and locks it down. Here is my uh, air conditioning unit that I purchased to put it in. It goes in, it's insulated thick all the way around everywhere with air to breathe. I just framed it in simply. The door used to come up to about here, so I cut a little bit. I shortened the door, as you can tell. And I made my own uh, rebuild of a cabinet. I think it's way more beneficial to have these rigid as opposed to uh, shelving as opposed to one bar that goes across for suits in the 1950s. I don't get it, but there you go works well it's structurally sound and i think it gives more support now here this is something that i put this in it didn't come with the uh, trailer originally it just seemed like dead space and so i just i tapped into the struts the verticals uh there it's it's kind of like uh one buys in a grid sandwich between uh, the eighth inch birch. So it's just a sandwich board. Very rigid, very solid, but very light.
this right here was what I was telling you about. This came out of, a, I don't know, it was a car. And it just rolls up. I made the vanity right here, uh, just out of some birch wood. And it attaches here. You can lift it off if you wanted to. But it quickly pulls down and just latches under here. It's got these little things that go down and latch under there. But it is great for knocking out the, the sun and the privacy. And obviously, when you feel like going to the restroom, you want your privacy. So all these get locked down. This is the backsplash. Uh, I got lucky. A friend of mine had this sitting in his backyard. And I said, what are you doing with it? And he goes, I don't know. Do you want it? And I said, yes. That's my backsplash. This is the window covering I made. I put a strip of metal in there. I put magnets down here so that you can magnetize it and just stick it up. I didn't want the fluffy curtains all fluttering around in here. It just didn't work. So that's my design. Just cardboard. I did it on a sewing machine myself. Pretty easy. This was all replaced. This is one of those focal points where you're like, I want that to be pretty. And I'll be honest with you, I could have done anything I wanted, but I couldn't find anything that was light, simple. And this was the cheapest piece of wood I could have bought ever. It was 15 bucks for a two foot by four foot section at Lowe's. It's just nothing more than uh, project wood. It just happened to have this yellowy grain texture that I lightly sanded and just lacquered. Just put a wipe on poly. This I made with the scraps just to cover the hole. Okay, obviously. Oops. And then this is another thing that I do uh, when I'm not using this. I made a cover for it. It's got some backing to keep it from scratching but at the end of the day it's going to get used that's where i store all my stuff when i'm traveling but i got lucky the the oven was in great shape honestly i don't know if it was ever even used when it comes to this uh i took this apart took it all out <clears throat> they had painted this was all painted on the inside so i sandblasted and cleaned it as best as I could I kept the original sticker and I just I this is where I did use uh, gutter um, it's not caulking it's really rubbery and clear but gutter seal inside here um, just in the joints area but I kept it original I did insulate the sides and the back um, including inside the walls I mean I really had to peel the I'll get to that in a minute but everything got insulated in here we'll just leave it at that storage eventually I'm gonna cut a hole here and I'm gonna put a slider door and there will be storage under that wheel well as well so uh, let's see let's talk about this I literally took the floor from about here forward and replaced it and I replaced all the paneling up to about here. And then I replaced this wall, that wall, and pretty much the entire ceiling and over in here was new birch. Um, I kept what I, I could keep and salvage. I tried to match it as best as I could. Yeah. In the end, it looks a little bit like the Partridge family, but it gives it ambiance. Here's the only thing I'm not proud of. It got crushed. I was at the end of my project. I'm like, I'll fix it later, but um, I just did some patchwork here. But I put this across as well. This is just nothing more than a header so that I could put lighting. That's all. Just a strip of lighting um, to give some ambiance. Obviously, this is new. I don't even remember what brand it is, but it's got suction in, suction out, and I did, if you don't know if you can know that, see that, but there's one of those Max Air covers on the outside as well so that you can drive with, with it open.
open with it on, what have you. Anyway, but yeah, this is uh, this is my space. I did put a heater in. Um, I went with one of those diesel heaters. I don't know if you can see that, but this is my console. And you just turn it on. It comes out at about 275 degrees. It's just one little port down there, but it blows pretty hard. And 275 degrees worth of heat for this small trailer, plenty, plenty, plenty. The heater itself is under the seat. I don't know if you can see that. So it's just down there. Um, it's got plenty of section around the sides, but it's like Arizona. It's a dry heat. So propane burning in here when it's cold outside just adds dew. You'll be wiping off your ceilings. It's just gross. The bed itself got remade as well. I have. Ooh. This is where I keep my battery and the electrical. And then, obviously this is a sealed bathroom compartment, but that's the cargo door to the outside. And yeah, storage. And my on off button, right there. Yeah, uh, I don't believe these are original. It's how they came though to me. They might have had them redone. I don't necessarily like them. They're not the most comfortable, but they'll do. After all, I'm not sleeping there. I sleep there. This is new. Just a three quarter inch piece of ply that had one good side and it got sanded and lacquered. So, anyway, the rebuild took me a year, like I said. The, uh, Everything on the inside, when I rebuilt it and had it open, I used styrofoam insulation, and that was a good idea. It really made a big difference, and it also made a huge difference on the roof, because when I peeled that off, everything got replaced on the roof. Every cross member, everything got sandwiched with pocket screws. It's rigid, it's flexible, and it is now insulated, which is awesome. Anyway, shout out to Larry. Thank you for all your help. If it wasn't for you, um, I would never have gotten this far. And if it wasn't for you, I probably would have gave up a long time ago and just sold it for pennies on the dollar to get rid of it. But to be honest, this is my little sanctuary. I love it. I use it constantly. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, it's in my backyard. I keep it under the tree. I blew a hole through my back fence, made a gate, but yeah, it's a great small enough trailer. It's a rolling apartment, but these are definitely the coolest, coolest little travel trailers ever built. So thanks, Larry, for that. I'll see you around. Maybe when you do your victory tour, give me a ring. We'll help you set it up and we'll go do some overnights. Peace.